The new allegations against John Diddy Combs, a music producer, is accusing hip-hop mogul of sexually assaulting him and forcing him to have sex with prostitutes. But a lawyer for Combs called the events described in the lawsuit pure fiction. This is now one of several sexual assault lawsuits filed against Combs in recent months, including a lawsuit from the R&B singer Cassie that was settled last year. Now to the latest legal drama involving rapper and music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. A new lawsuit filed by a producer and videographer on Diddy's latest project accuses him of sexual assault. This is the fifth lawsuit against Diddy since November. Hey there, folks. Ready to dive into the latest episode of the P. Diddy soap opera? Hold on to your hats because this ride's about to get even crazier. We're talking about everything from juicy rumors about his connection to Tupac's demise to the drama with Cassie that had us all glued to our screens. And let's not even get started on those lawsuits. Remember Cindy, his chef, accusing him of assault? Yeah, that was a thing. But wait, there's more. Just a few months back, we were hit with even more allegations and some leaked footage seeking revenge. And if that wasn't enough, a bombshell dropped in December 2023 with claims from a woman who says Diddy did her wrong when she was barely 17. Now, hot off the press, one of his producers is stepping into the spotlight with a lawsuit of his own. Buckle up, folks, because we're about to take a deep dive into the latest messiness of the P. Diddy saga. So check it out. Sean Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, is facing yet another lawsuit. And this time, it's from a music producer named Rodney Lil Rod Jones. Lil Rod's claiming he was sexually assaulted and pressured into making love with adult industry workers while he was working on Diddy's latest album. This ain't the first rodeo for Diddy in the courtroom either. This is the fifth time he's been hit with such assault allegations. Diddy's lawyer, though? He ain't having any of it. Sean Holly, Diddy's attorney, straight up called the lawsuit pure fiction and said they got solid proof to back it up. They're ready to take it to court and shut it down. According to court docs, Lil Rod was rolling with Diddy from September 2022 to November 2023. He says he got drugged and woke up butt naked, confused as heck, with two sex workers and Diddy in the mix. But wait, there's more. Lil Rod's throwing around some heavy accusations, saying Diddy was grooming him for some shady stuff and even dragging underage girls into the mix at parties. He's got photos to back it up too. And it's not just Diddy catching heat. Lil Rod suing Diddy's son Justin, his chief of staff Christina Corum, and big shots like Universal Music Group CEO Sir Lucian Grange and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia have to marry him. Lil Rod's basically saying they all turned a blind eye to Diddy's antics. But Justin's camp ain't having it. They're calling it all lies and saying it's just someone trying to cash in. Lil Rod's gunning for a hefty $30 million with this lawsuit. Things are heating up, and it looks like this legal battle's just getting started. And here's the deal. Diddy's facing his fifth lawsuit now. Remember Cassie, his ex-girl? She sued him back in November, claiming he did her wrong too back in 2018 and put her through years of hell. They settled that one real quick though. Cassie said she wanted to sort things out in a way where she had some say in it. But now, four more people are coming forward with lawsuits against him. One says Diddy drugged her and assaulted her, then showed off a video of the attack. Another woman is alleging Diddy and another guy took turns molesting and doing awful things to her and her friend back in the early 90s. Diddy's not taking any of it lying down, though. He's denying every single accusation. In December, he made it crystal clear. I didn't do any of the messed up stuff they're saying. I'm fighting for my name, my fam, and the truth. But here's the twist. While Diddy's slamming all these accusations, Meek Mills suddenly found himself tangled up in this chaotic Diddy drama. It's like a scene straight out of a reality show. Diddy's back in the spotlight, and Meek's unexpectedly thrust into the mix. you think what happens behind closed doors at Diddy's crib would stay there, but it's like Pandora's box has been flung wide open. And now, with Meek Mill thrown into the mix, this drama's about to hit a whole new level of crazy. So, Meek Mill's landed himself smack in the middle of this wild Diddy drama. Yeah, you heard that right. Diddy's in hot water, and Meek's getting dragged along for the ride. Now normally what goes down in Diddy's bedroom should stay there, right? But it seems like Diddy's been keeping secrets for way too long, and now the lid's blown wide open. Back in the day, the hip-hop scene wasn't exactly cool with Diddy's lifestyle choices. But hey, gossip travels fast, especially in the rap game. Some big names haven't been shy about airing Diddy's laundry, mostly with lawsuits from women alleging some heavy stuff. 
But now, it's a whole new level. Enter Lil Rod, dropping a bombshell with a whopping 73-page case, spilling some crazy beans about Diddy. Rodney's laying it all bare about his time producing Diddy's latest tracks. Picture this. Rodney practically living in Diddy's crib for over a year, and things getting way too close for comfort. According to his lawsuit, it's like a horror flick in the making. Rodney's spilling it all, from Diddy making unwelcome moves to straight up invading his personal space. Awkward doesn't even begin to cover it, but brace yourselves, cause it gets even wilder. Rodney's talking about these supposed secret hookups Diddy was orchestrating with escorts, and apparently, he wasn't the only one involved. Stevie J and Justin Combs supposedly in cahoots too, rounding up young ladies for Diddy's pleasure palace. And get this, Rodney's claiming he's got footage showing Diddy mixing drinks for underage girls at his parties. Rodney's spinning this crazy tale about Diddy trying to rope him into some twisted relationship, even making him watch what he thought was Stevie J getting down with another dude. The lawsuit even dropped some bombshell screenshots, alleging they showed Stevie J in some compromising positions. Now here's the twist. In this lawsuit, no direct names were dropped in public docs. But internet sleuths have been on the case, connecting dots like it's a game. Meek Mill and Usher's names popped up, not because they're accused of anything, but because of some interesting redactions in the legal papers. Imagine, a mysterious rapper allegedly caught up in some shady business on Diddy's yacht. Wild, right? Everyone's playing detective pointing fingers at Meek Mill. But hold up, there's more. The same description pops up again, this time linked to Stevie J's drama. Apparently Diddy's been pressuring Meek and other artists into shady stuff in exchange for Grammy nods and awards. Talk about dirty deals. Now, about those screenshots floating around, turns out they might not be as damning as they seem. An adult film star swoops in, saying the images were mistaken. He straight up says, this is not him, it's me. Y'all really be trying it. And as for Stevie J, he's lawyered up, denying all allegations like a boss. But wait, there's more. Young Miami's caught up too. Rodney's not holding back, throwing some major shade her way. He's spilling tea about her bringing her own cousin into the mix for some shady dealings with Diddy. We're talking coke-fueled antics and all sorts of sketchiness. Rodney's had enough of this circus, and who can blame him? He's out of there, but hold on to your hats, cause there's more. Another unnamed rapper and R&B singer get a shout out in the lawsuit. The rapper's described as Philly-born and once dated Nicki, sounds like Meek again, right? And the R&B singer? Hint, Super Bowl performer with a Vegas residency. Yeah, it's Usher. Meek's not taking this mess lightly. He's been blowing up Twitter, airing his frustrations nonstop. And with all this drama, who can blame him? Ain't nobody gonna play no games with me? They trying to do damage control? The same thing they almost tricked y'all with Lil Baby. And then, he had academics on his scope. He said, Academics and alcoholic fully powered by the white man. Who you think posting that on every website? They be so mad they can't stop a few groups. LOL. He's an alcoholic with no life talking to kids on a computer. Normal kids watch Kai Aiden. Wallow Gilly, you a sick old black man with no life achievements trying to destroy black men because you envy us as me. So, Meek Mill found himself in a real sticky situation when Twitter exploded with rumors tying him to some messy drama involving Diddy and Usher. Fans, being the sleuths they are, dug up old tweets where Meek had praised Diddy to high heaven, saying the guy was as good as it gets crazy how these things were hiding in plain sight all along. Then DJ Academics jumped on the train, pointing fingers at Meek as the mystery player in this chaos. Meek wasn't having it though. He clapped back, telling Academics to cut it out and warning him about what might go down if they ever cross paths. But wait, there's more drama. Meek got into it with Andrew Tate too after Tate chimed in on the accusations. Meek didn't hold back, hitting back with, were you trafficking women? What's wrong with you, man? Tate tried to defend himself, but Meek shut him down real quick. Meek took to Twitter to clear his name, denying every single allegation thrown at him. He made it crystal clear he's a Philly guy, doesn't mess with drugs, and nobody's gonna even dare approach him with that nonsense. He even threw some shade saying he only rolls with his real ones and never gets caught up with industry folks solo. And Meek's not the only one fighting back. Diddy's lawyers pulling overtime to squash these rumors, calling Lil Rod a liar and aiming to shut down his $30 million lawsuit. She's not holding back, saying they got proof to debunk his claims and they're ready to take him to court. This whole mess has been a real hit to Diddy, and now 
all these artists are getting dragged into the mix too. Fans are having a blast with this new info, making memes and sharing videos of Diddy calling Meek Daddy. Yeah, it's a lot to digest, but it's starting to piece together now. The big question on everyone's lips, did Meek actually do what they're saying, or is it all just talk? Guess we'll just have to wait and see. All right, picture this. It's a laid back afternoon in April, and Diddy's throwing a little party at his massive Homeby Hills mansion. He's got this swanky pad, like 17,000 square feet, and he's gathered about 20 music big shots to check out his latest studio album, his first in nearly two decades. Now imagine the scene. You've got these industry insiders sipping cocktails, grooving to tunes and checking out the art. Diddy's got this awesome painting by Kerry James Marshall called Past Times Hanging Up, which he snagged at an auction a few years back for a cool $21.1 million. Talk about living the high life, right? Diddy's come a long way from his hip hop days, from producer to fashion mogul with Sean John, and even making bank with Tirok Vodka. Anyway, at this bash, Diddy's not just flaunting his mansion and art, he's hyping up his new R&B label, Love Records, and dropping tracks from his latest album, The Love Album Off The Grid, featuring heavy hitters like Justin Bieber and Mary J. Blige. So, everything's cool, right? Well, fast forward seven months, and Diddy's world gets turned upside down. Suddenly, he's hit with a bunch of lawsuits accusing him of all sorts. Forcing intercourse, offering his wife to other men, assault, you name it. It's like his whole empire's under fire and the music world's buzzing with shock and gossip. But Diddy and his legal team are clapping back hard, denying every single accusation. Diddy's been dealing with some major drama lately, and it's got everyone talking. His ex Cassie dropped a bombshell lawsuit, and guess what? He settled that one real quick. Then there's Joy Dickerson Neal, claiming Diddy drugged and wronged her back in 91, recorded the whole thing, and then spread the footage without her consent. And as if that wasn't enough, Liza Gardner filed another lawsuit, alleging Diddy and Guy singer Aaron Hall assaulted her too. But wait, there's more. Now there's a fourth lawsuit, alleging Diddy and his former bad boy label Prez, Harv Pierre, assaulted and trafficked a 17-year-old girl. Pierre's calling it all lies, saying it's just a desperate money grab. And as for Aaron Hall, he's nowhere to be found for comment. But Diddy's not taking any of this lying down. He's hitting back on Instagram, saying he's fed up with these accusations staining his name and rep. He's swearing up and down that none of it's true, and he's ready to fight tooth and nail to clear his name and protect his fam. So what's up with Diddy's sudden fall from grace? Well, according to insiders who've been in the game with him for ages, like former bad boy execs and his inner circle, the lawsuits ain't coming out of left field. They're saying this mistreatment of women thing has been going on for ages, stretching way back to the early days. Kirk Burroughs, who co-founded Bad Boy with Diddy back in 92, spilled the beans, saying violence was just part of Diddy's playbook, even if it wasn't common knowledge back then. He straight up called Diddy traumatizing to women, but predictably, Diddy's camp's keeping mom about Burroughs' claims. And it's not just Diddy under the spotlight. It looks like the entire music industry's under fire, with lawsuits popping up left and right against heavy hitters like L.A. Reid, Neil Portnow, and Steven Tyler. With Diddy thrown into the mix, it's like the industry's finally facing the music on abuse and power. So, let's talk about Diddy's history. All the drama and scandals that are coming out now have been actually simmering for years, just under our noses. Diddy's the man who's been hustling in every arena since day one. Whether he's grinding it out in the gritty streets of NYC hip hop or rubbing shoulders at the Met Gala, he's everywhere. You've seen him holding it down in corporate meetings and flashing that megawatt smile as a guest co-host on Live with Regis and Kelly. According to Jason King, big shot over at USC's music school and a guru on black music culture, Diddy's been a heavyweight in the black music scene since the early 90s. He's like the Donald Trump of celebrity performer entrepreneurs with that flashy, charming vibe hiding who knows what. Diddy's impact on hip hop, massive. He's the guy who turned it from a niche subculture to a global corporate powerhouse. Starting off as an intern at Andre Harrell's Uptown Records, he launched Bad Boy Records in 93 with the legendary Clive Davis backing him. And man, did he know how to spot talent? Just look at the roster he built. The Notorious Big, Mace, Faith Evans, The Locks, 112, you name it. But Diddy wasn't content with just being behind the scenes. Nope, 
he stepped right into the spotlight as an A-list artist and performer. With a whopping 15 top 10 hits under his belt, whether as a writer, producer, or taking the mic himself, he owned the charts. Remember I'll Be Missing You? That tribute to the late Notorious Big with its police sample. It dominated the Hot 100 for a whopping 11 weeks back in 97. But Diddy didn't stop there. He played a big role in shaping the careers of artists like Machine Gun Kelly, French Montana, and Janelle Monet. In fact, Janelle's album, The Age of Pleasure, released through Bad Boy Atlantic in 2023, even scored a Grammy nom for Album of the Year. Jason King sums it up nicely. Diddy's cut from the same cloth as black moguls like Barry Gordy from Motown. He wasn't just about the music, he was all about the branding. And that fusion of black music and branding it completely changed the game, paving the way for stars like Beyonce and Pharrell Williams. Always on the grind, in 98, Diddy launched his own fashion line, Sean John. Fast forward to 2016, he cashed in big, selling off most of the brand for a cool reported $70 million. But that's not all. Diddy had his hands in TV too, producing MTV's Making the Band. And let's not forget the gems that came out of that show. Danity Kane and Day 26, anyone? Then, in 2007, he struck a deal with Diageo, the British drinks giant, to promote Kirok, the premium vodka brand. Diageo shelled out nearly $1 billion to Diddy over the years for his efforts, according to the company. And in 2013, he co-founded Revolt TV, a whole cable network and multimedia empire. As Machine Gun Kelly put it back in 2015, Bad Boy wasn't just about the music, it was a lifestyle. It showed artists they could do way more than just drop beats. They could dive into fashion, fragrances. Heck, they could even build their own empires. But despite carefully crafting an image of a street-savvy CEO who rose from the ranks, violence seemed to shadow Diddy's personal life. Back in 91, chaos erupted at an AIDS fundraiser he organized at City College of New York, resulting in nine tragic deaths due to a crowd stampede. Then, in 99, he faced assault charges after an altercation with Interscope Records exec Steve Stout, later pleading guilty to harassment. That same year, trouble brewed again when a shooting occurred at a Manhattan club where Diddy was partying with then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez and bad boy artist Shine. While Diddy was acquitted of gun possession and bribery charges, Shine got slapped with a 10-year prison sentence. Fast forward to 2012, Cassie's lawsuit alleges Diddy threatened to blow up rapper Kid Cootie's car suspecting Cassie and Cootie were an item. Lo and behold, Cootie's car exploded around that time. In 2015, Diddy found himself in hot water after allegedly attacking his son Justin's college football coach with a kettlebell weight, although charges were eventually dropped. And it doesn't stop there. Former associates from the bad boy days have come forward with their own tales of violence, including allegations of physical assault against women and business partners. In 2003, Kirk Burroughs, former president of Bad Boy Entertainment, sued Diddy, claiming he was threatened into signing over his shares with a baseball bat in hand. Burroughs also recalled an incident in 94 where Diddy allegedly assaulted a woman at the Bad Boy offices, leaving behind a shattered glass table. While Diddy's rep declined to comment on these allegations, they paint a troubling picture of his past. Burroughs, having been in the thick of it, didn't hold back in his support of Cassie and the other accusers. Cassie is a hero to everyone who has been devastated by Sean Combs, he declared. He admitted to being swayed by Diddy's charm initially, but soon learned the true cost of associating with him. Meanwhile, Michelle Joyce and LaJoyce Brookshire, who both clocked in at Bad Boy Arista during the mid-90s, were floored by the accusations. Joyce, Bad Boy's inaugural director of marketing, recounted how 80% of the staff at Bad Boy were women during her tenure highlighting the presence of strong female voices in the mix. Brookshire echoed Joyce's sentiments, lamenting the tarnishing of their hard-earned legacy. She reminisced about the fast-paced, high-pressure environment under Combs, recalling instances like receiving a call on a Monday to organize a lavish white party by Saturday, a typical whirlwind experience at Bad Boy. Joyce, reflecting on the fallout, shared her sadness and the collective despondency among former colleagues. Despite the stain on their legacy, she emphasized the enduring impact of their work in shaping hip-hop history. And that's a wrap on the latest scoop, folks. We've seen Diddy accused yet again, and it makes you wonder. 
until when is this gonna keep coming? And the truth of the matter is, we have no clue. Diddy's been a mogul in the music business for decades, and he's got a well-established network of people. He's been making big boy moves over the years, and those connections are basically what kept him secure over the years. However, with Cassie coming out and filing her lawsuit against Diddy, it seems like all hell broke loose. People are coming out left and right, and they are all victims of Diddy's dark side that has been kept secret for who knows how long. This guy has been a menace, but it might be the end for him now. The very least that is going to happen is that Diddy's never going to be on top of the game again. His reputation is already decimated. The worst? Who knows? Maybe they lock him up if he's found guilty in court of law. Thanks for tuning in to catch up on the latest dish. Remember, the internet's always buzzing, and we're here to keep you in the loop. Stay curious, stay informed, and until next time, keep it rizzled.